Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at graphics and to sort of demonstrate some of the functionality that we've got I thought we'd make a very very simple program and we're going to replicate a sort of etch-a-sketch style game so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my form set up ready for this so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, give my form a more meaningful name so etch-a-sketch okay I'm going to need various controls to be able to do this, so I'm going to need something, I'm just going to basically have an up, a down, a left and a right to control things. I'm going to need something to draw on. I'm going to need some way of sort of clearing the screen. So let's look at some of those things first of all. Right, the panel's really useful for drawing into, so I'm just going to use the panel to sort of take a portion of my screen for doing the drawing on. I'm just going to elongate my form a little bit. And then I'm going to require four buttons, sort of my up, and I'm going to have that a little smaller, and I'm going to need one for down. I'm just going to replicate these buttons by copying and pasting them to keep things simple. Up, down, a left, and a right button. Those are going to be my controls there, and I'm going to need some sort of button for maybe clearing things back down. I could add other things like I could my combo boxes uh, for choosing maybe a colour or radio buttons to choose a colour but for the moment I'm just going to keep things really simple. Now because I'm writing a proper program this time I'm going to go and just change the names of some of these. So panel 1 I'm going to just call that uh, drawing panel so I know what I've called it later on. Uh, this one's going to be uh, BTN up. I'm going to have BTN down, of course, BTN left, and BTN right. So that's sort of taking care of the name of those. Of course, I need this one to have something, so BTN clear. Um, now I really could do with putting something in to, to tell the user what we've got. So I don't know how much, if I can, or how much room I've got here, but let's just see if I need to make this a bit bigger. So I want to up. Um, I could save myself a little bit of aggro here. I could just use a sort of arrow to represent left and arrow for right. And I'm going to have them down on that one there. Okay, that was a bit small, so I could do it just changing that or thinking of a different symbol, but uh, just sort of stretch it for a minute so it just fits in. Okay, so I've got my various buttons now set up. So the next job obviously is to do some of the drawing. Now before we do that I'm just going to demonstrate how you can draw onto this panel. Um, so I'm just going to bring in a button that I'm going to delete in a little bit. Um, but I'm just going to show you some of the basics of drawing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to double click to add an event handler. Because I'm going to delete this later on in a moment. But to draw we have to get a graphics object. And the sort of pattern for doing this is we'd say something like graphics. And I'm just going to call this G equals, now I've got my draw panel, which is my panel on my form, and I've got something called create graphics there. Okay, so now my item G here is going to allow me to do graphic operations, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say G dot, and you'll notice that you've got all of these different methods here that you can use. So draw rectangle, pi, path, all these different things, and they all work in very similar ways. I'm just going to use the draw rectangle to start off with to show you how this will work. Now it's asking for this thing called a pen and pens are really easy. You just need to say create me a new pen and there are four overloaded methods here but what we're going to do is just pass in a colour. So I'm going to say make me a new, uh, sorry, a new pen and make its colour red. Okay. And you can see there are other things we can do. We can pass in a rectangle or floats or ins. So what I'm going to do is just say I want you to draw this. Let's start it off at position 10. So X, Y. Oops. And we need to give it some sort of width. So let's say 100. And some sort of height. Let's say 200. Okay. The only thing to bear in mind here with these coordinates, your X and Y, works the same as normally when you've got maths where you have your x coordinate going across here okay but your y coordinate is going to go the opposite direction so if we've got zero zero here the y coordinate gets bigger as we go down the form so you just have to bear that one in mind 
So x is the same, but y is probably the reverse of what you're used to. So here we've got it. We're going to start off at drawing at 10, 10, and it's going to be 100 by 200 in size. So let's just check. I hope my brackets are right. don't think I've missed one there. We're going to run that through just to see what happens. And I'm going to press my button, and you can see that I've got a rectangle now drawn on the screen. Now, good practice is here that we dispose of our graphics object when we finish drawing. Obviously, when we're working with graphics, it's quite, it can be quite memory hungry. So just as good practice, just remember that you get rid of your graphics object when you've finished. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the completed uh, Etch-a-Sketch. I'm just going to play this project and bring this down. So you can see we've got the panel, I've got my clear button and my direction. So what I'm going to do is just start and you can see that uh, my drawing starts from the centre of the panel. And I can choose whether to go left, right, up or down. And I can also clear and I can continue drawing from where I left off. So that's the project we're going to make and of course there are a few extensions. I'd probably bring in some radio buttons here maybe so that you can change the colour. Perhaps the clear button should recenter um, the pen so that it starts from the middle again. But they're, they're simple things that you can tackle. So we'll take a look at how we create this and I'll go through all the steps that I went through and build this up from the ground. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is uh, take a look at the controls and begin to put some code behind. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is declare some variables. And if you remember back to your Year 12 course where we created variables, putting variables in the form isn't really that much different. But we're going to just drop into the code view, first of all, and just take a look at where we would put our variables. So... When we look at classes next, we'll see how this is put together. But basically, what you need to do if you're declaring global variables, as in variables that you're going to use throughout your code, they need to just sit at the top here between these two public keywords, okay? Just before this public form one in my example. So, this is where I put my global variables. Now, for my etcher sketch, I'm going to need two of these. I'm going to need to track where my x coordinate and my y coordinate are. I'm going to need a special t uh, data type for this. I'm going to use something called a float for these. Um, and a float is just basically a decimal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name my two variables position x and position y. Now, I've declared my variables here, but I'm not actually going to assign them a value just yet. We'll talk about where to put that in a minute. Also, we looked at the graphics object. And I think a good place to put my graphics object so that I can get it everywhere is just at the top. So now I've got these variables here all global to my entire form. So the next thing I'm going to do is go down to this little bit here. Now again when we look at object oriented programming we'll see that this is something called a constructor but in terms of this video just be aware that this is a great place to initialize all of your variables. Now what I mean by initialize up here for example you might have said position y equals zero but we actually want to do something more specific with them. We, for this program, we're going to want to calculate the position X and the position Y to be at the center of that panel when the program starts. So this little bit of code here, and you'll always be able to find it because it'll have initialized component within it, is a great place to start. This is always called first. So this little bit of code will run as soon as your form loads. So this is a great place for me to calculate my first starting position X and position Y. Now, my position X in this case is going to be the panel width divided by 2. So we know we called my panel drawing panel and I can use the width property and I can simply divide that by 2 and that's going to give me the starting position X and the same for position Y, just take my drawing panel take the height of that and just divide that by 2. So very very straightforward to calculate that middle starting position so the form is now going to load and it's going to say position x is whatever that panel is divided by 2. The other thing to do is to initialize that graphics object. So g equals, now we've got my drawing panel, and I'm just going to use the create graphics. 
important thing is just make sure you put these bits of code just after this bit here if you don't you're probably going to get an error because these controls won't have been drawn yet so always remember if you want these things to be initialized at the very start put them in here but just make sure they're under initialize components so hopefully now uh, if I run that these variables would be set so that's a good start the next thing we're going to do is how do we actually then go and draw onto my panel so let's go back into the actual form here and let's start putting in some of these controls so the first thing I'm going to do is program the up button so I'm going to double click and I'm just going to use the event handler here to draw my um, etch -a sketch line as soon as I press the button so how do I do that well, it's quite simple what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my graphics object and I'm going to simply draw a line I'm going to create myself a new pen for it so a new pen and I'm going to say that my colour of my pen is going to be red and I want to draw that at my X position which I've declared at the top so you can see now that it appears in the IntelliSense so I can use my position X I can put in position Y and I'm moving up the screen here so obviously the X coordinate is going to stay the same but the Y coordinate is going to change and you can see what this is doing this is giving me the starting X Y position of my line and this is giving me the finishing position so the starting X is going to be exactly the same but the finishing Y for up is going to be different that's going to be position Y and I'm just going to move it by five pixels now this sounds silly I'm you're going up but I'm subtracting a value and remember that's because your coordinates for your Y values work the opposite way around zero zero starts in the top left and the Y coordinate gets greater as you move down the form so I'm going to subtract 5 from that Y coordinate there that's the line drawn now the only thing left to do is to update my X and my Y position because remember here I've not updated Y I've just subtracted 5 from it so finally I just need to say position Y my new position Y is going to be whatever it was before subtracted 5 and of course that means that the next time it draws it it's going to be in the correct position. So I'm going to quickly whiz through and put all of the other bits of code in and then we can try that out and give that a go. Uh, let's just quickly just do one more. We're going to just do the right button so put the right button in here. Um, I'm going to just borrow that bit of code. It's nice and easy. It saves me rewriting it. I'm going to paste that in there. I've got my draw lines fine. This time they were working on the X coordinates, so we're moving right, so we can leave Y where it is. But in our final X position here, if we're moving right, the coordinates work the same way, so we need to add 5 to that. And down here, we just need to say that plus 5. Okay, I'll leave it with you to go and put in the rest of the, the functions. It's fairly, fairly similar to do that. Uh, the only thing that we need to add now just to finish this off really is the clear button so let's take a look at how we might do that again I'm just going to add an event handler to this now the graphics object has got quite a useful uh, little method in here that you can use and it's the clear method it expects you to give it a colour so my panel's white so I'm just going to use colour.white and what that will do it will clear anything that's in there at this point when I, um, when I clear I might want to reset the X and Y positions and you can see here I've just come and put a comment in here and all I would do there is I'd recalculate the position but again I'll leave that for you to put in yourself okay so let's just have a look at that running okay so we can see we've got our up buttons working now and our right button working okay so nice and straightforward I'm just going to show you what would have happened on this button up. If you remember I said about the coordinates working the other way around so even though in this event handler it's saying up we've subtracted if we just swap that round so it's back to front even though we think up would mean adding on a value let's just run that through again and you'll see what I mean uh, bring that onto view and you can see it's now working back to front so just be aware of that so remember coordinate zero zero moving up and uh, let's just try a clear button we can see that that clears the screen. So as extensions to this, I definitely put some radio buttons in that allowed you to change the colour of the pen. They're really easy to do, and you'll just need to think about in your code 
how you sort of change this value. So I might put in some sort of global variable that holds the color and have some radio buttons that can perhaps change that. But either way, it's a good sort of extension practice for you to, to give a go.